Hi, I am Dr. Rakesh Jalali. I am the medical director of the Apollo Proton Cancer Center, but also I am a neuro oncologist with 25 years experience dedicated for the care of brain tumor patients. Uh, brain tumors also like in any other cancer or any other tumor in the current times of COVID-19 also pose unique challenges. But brain tumors also have to be dealt with like we have made other modifications for other cancer care. And I like to tell you what are the steps in general oncology community, the neuro oncology community and also the Apollo Proton Cancer Center has formulated to look after you and to take care of you. To give you a little background, brain tumors may constitute only 1 to 2 or 3 percent of overall cancers, but they present formidable challenges in their own right. First of all, they affect all ages from the very, very young to children to adolescents to teenage to middle age and to the very old. And as you know, COVID, especially in comorbidities and slightly older people, more than 60, 65, are slightly at a higher risk of developing the more complications. The infection rate may be the same, but their aggressiveness and the problems that they can cause uh, in those situations are slightly higher. So we have to be a little bit more careful in that segment. Pediatric brain tumors or the tumors, brain tumors in children especially are at slightly more challenging because brain tumors in children are the commonest cancers if you look at the pediatric population. But pediatric brain tumors are also carry a very high cure rate. 70 to 80 percent of these patients can be cured forever. So therefore, the challenge is that you have to ensure the proper care, otherwise this cure rate will not come. And also you cannot compromise too much because the long term survivorship and quality of life of these brain tumor children is equally if not more important than only just curing them. And brain tumor management also is multidisciplinary. It involves a neurologist, it involves a neurosurgeon, it involves a neuro oncologist, a pediatric oncologist, a radiation oncologist, a MRI specialist or a neuro radiologist, a neuropathologist a molecular diagnostician which will who will actually tell us the molecular diagnostics of the of the brain tumor the psychologist the rehabilitation person the long term uh, survivor survivor clinic care coordinators the ophthalmologist and so on and so forth endocrinologist so it's a big group and fortunately we have one of the internationally renowned state of the art neuro oncology setup in in the apollo proton cancer center as also a senior member and a founder of the Indian Society of Neuro-Oncology with my colleagues uh, in Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai, we recently published the guidelines and the standard operating procedures for brain tumor patient community in the current era of COVID-19 as to how to, do, how, to, how to deal with them appropriately and judiciously. So what we proposed was Number one, the patients of brain tumors who have been diagnosed with benign brain tumors and there are several benign brain tumors like a tumor of the pituitary gland which is called pituitary adenoma, a meningioma, an acoustic schwannoma which is acoustic neuroma which is of the tumor of the eighth nerve. They are very slow growing indolent and sometimes they take time to diagnose and also those who have been already diagnosed because there is not a great sense of urgency in them and we can observe them, we can observe them on a video or an audio consultation. So that is for the benign brain tumors. There are some benign brain tumors though which might need some urgent intervention. For example, a tumor in a child close to the optic nerve is called an optic nerve glioma or a craniopharyngioma which actually is a low grade or a benign brain tumor. But if we do not deal with them, they can significantly affect the vision of that child of that patient. So there you cannot afford not to give any treatment. Similarly, by the location of the tumor in a particular site in the brain, they can affect their memory, their speech, their cognition, their ability to interact with their families their uh, uh, function of the limb, they may have dizziness, all these symptoms are there. 
Now the challenge uh, in these situations and also the challenge will be in the intermediate group of patients which have slightly higher grade of tumors and also the very high grade or malignant brain tumors like a gliomas or a brain metastasis where the tumors goes to the brain from other sites there you cannot afford not to do anything. In those situations we are encouraging what are called virtual COVID-19 neuro-oncology clinics which are dedicated as a multidisciplinary team with the members that I already mentioned and we are doing it virtually. Only few people meet physically and others plug in through the virtual platforms and we are doing a number of consultations on a daily basis to many people in the country and other countries as well. They are welcome to interact with us and one of the immediate challenges to get the appropriate CT scans and MRI scans to be done but a number of centers with the appropriate personal protection equipment to the staff members and also to the appropriate sanitization and disinfection policy can undergo wherever it is critical to do an appropriate imaging facility. As far as surgery is concerned which is probably one of the most important steps initially to diagnose and to take care of the brain tumor patients. We are doing surgeries also we take appropriate steps in the core committees wherever there is a risk of aerolization of the virus even if the patient is asymptomatic we have made alternative arrangements not to open through that surgical routes which may throw the aerolization of the virus but we are adopting a different route to enter into the tumor and this has been proven now in the last several weeks such that the safety is ensured both from the patient as well as to the healthcare workers and appropriate steps have been taken very stringently about the double mask, about the donning and doffing of the personal protection gowns of the surgi surgical teams, minimal staff, the intubation, extubation of the anesthesia team, minimization of the surgical procedure and so on and so forth which are technical details. Similarly after that they undergo radiation therapy, we have made number of arrangements including this modern high precision proton therapy that many of our patients need in brain tumor patients because it has the ability to restrict the doses of radiation to the surrounding structures particularly pertinent to the young people of young patients with brain tumors both children and young adolescents and young uh, adults and also the, to the older people who are very old where it is very important to spare the normal tissue. We have made number of arrangements in the proton facility, their entrance and exit have been sanitized and they have been given a compartmentalized entrance and exit. The staff has also been trained literally on a daily basis on a virtual platform to take the appropriate precautions. Sometimes we encourage the patients to undergo a precautionary COVID test for the attendants also such that we take appropriate precautions and also the appropriate diet and the precautions wherever they are staying in the next 5-6 weeks during the course of radiation are also given. Wherever applicable we are reducing the treatment time also to 3 to 4 or 5 weeks even if it is 1 or 2 or 3 weeks wherever clinically and oncologically it is equivalent to the conventional way of giving radiation we are implementing those protocols. For the chemotherapy also vast majority of the brain tumor patients fortunately need an oral capsule which the patients can take at home or in the facility it is not a major issue. Some of the brain tumors do need injectable especially the childhood brain tumors but fortunately with a very strong pediatric oncology team they are also using the personal protection and all the precautions. We are instituting wherever small modifications of the doses have to be done we have already instituted that with the modified doses it is very important to do it rather than not do anything because the tumor will not remain silent it will continue to grow it will affect the patient and it will be too late for us to cure that patient otherwise which is curable at this point of time. Uh, lastly they do need more care in terms of adhe adherence to their anti-convulsions because they may uh, some of these patients need anti-seizure medication, sometimes they need steroids, we are making arrangements for them if that situation happens that what are the precautions to be done. We have made number of SOPs and regulations to be shared for our brain tumor communities. We will also share them the link to the national 
Brain Tumor Foundation, the Indian Society of Neuro-Oncology link and also to the International Brain Tumor Alliance link which brings these brain tumor patients together on a common platform such that we can learn from each other even in those countries where the COVID pandemic is even more rampant with more number of patients how they have formulated and our guidelines actually have been disseminated on international platforms because they are also learning from us how we have formulated these guidelines in, in India such that we institute the proper care albeit with some modifications to the brain tumor community such that we give them the best possible care such that we cure your patients and we look after you as well as you need. Thank you very much.